And joining us now, great to welcome a man who has co-written a really interesting book. It's called Algorithms to Live By, the Computer Science of Human Decisions. We're going to find out about it right now with uh, Brian Christian, who I believe is out in uh, San Francisco today. And uh, Brian, good to talk with you. How are you? Um, I'm great, thanks. Thanks for having me. Interesting uh, topic for a book. I guess we all hear that term algorithm, uh, the Internet, based on that. But uh, this is kind of how you can use these algorithms uh, in your own personal life, right? Uh, how, how to make decisions? Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. So the book uses computer science as a way of thinking about human decision making. Um, you know, the premise is basically there is a set of problems that all of us have to face, whether it's, you know, finding an apartment or sorting or office or managing our time. And, you know, we think of these things as kind of uniquely human problems, but they're not. You know, there's, there's 50 years of computer science into equivalent versions of these problems. And so the surprising thing is we can actually learn something from computer science about how to make better decisions in our own lives. I've always wondered uh, you know, how algorithms uh, on uh, you know, Google search and all that, you, you type in a word and instantaneously it comes up. I know it uses algorithms that way. Uh, do, do we think that way? Is our brain wired that way? Um, you know, uh, I like to think of algorithms as kind of just any, any sequence of steps that solves a problem. And mm -hmm. so it's the kind of thing where we associate it now with, you know, these huge corporations online. But really, you know, we all learned algorithms in school. Uh, whether it was, you know, long division or subtraction, you know, carry the one and that sort of sure, thing. Sure. Um, so they're they're much more broadly applicable even than just uh, just at places like Google. And you, you kind of break it down into in different types uh, in the book, and I thought it was kind of interesting, uh, the, the whole 37% uh, uh, aspect. Right. I wasn't exactly sure uh, that wasn't actually studied that way. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, that's one of my favorite examples. Um, so we talk about this from the perspective of... Um, you know, apartment hunting or house hunting. You know, in a lot of markets in the country, uh, you don't have the option to look at a number of places and think about the one you like the best and then go back and make an offer. Typically, in a, in a pretty competitive area, in San Francisco is certainly one example, um, you walk into an open house and you pretty much have to decide on the spot, are you going to make an offer or are you going to walk away, in which case someone else is definitely going to get that place. And um, this is the kind of decision that is it's kind of fraught if you think about it. You know, you don't, want to, you don't want to leap at the very first place you see because there might be better places out there. Um, but you don't want to hold out too long and look at too many places because maybe your best option has already passed you by. And this is a case where computer science offers, you know, a, a kind of wonderfully explicit uh, piece of advice, which is you should spend exactly 30, excuse me, exactly 37% of your search time um, just kind of calibrating, just getting a benchmark for what, what's good and what's bad, and then only after that 37% um, be willing to commit to the first thing you see that's better than what you saw in the first 37%. Yeah. yeah okay. And it does not guarantee you that you will get the very best apartment, um, but it does guarantee you the best chance of getting the very best apartment. Yeah, I guess maybe uh, indirectly, uh, I've always kind of done that. I think guys tend to do that more. You do a little research on something you're going to buy or, or whatever, and, and then when you go in the store, you almost, the first two, one or two things you see, you, you know right away. So is that the similar kind of thinking? Yeah, so I mean, there's this question of how much research do you have to do before you have a good enough idea, right? right? right. Um, and so I think a lot of us, when we're making decisions, we're kind of weighing in our minds, you know, am I overthinking this? Am I underthinking this? Um, and this is a place where computer science um, offers this very, you know, very clear, very explicit guideline that says, you know, evaluate exactly 37%, and that is that is the correct amount of research to do in this situation. <laughs> Another term that everybody on a computer knows about is uh, is caching, or C-H-I-N-G, which really is a way of organizing files on the computer. But I thought it was interesting how you explained uh, in personal life how, how that works, how to organize. Uh, can, can you explain that a little bit? Absolutely, yeah. So this, this comes into play, um, you know, the idea of caching on a computer is uh, they have a limited amount of RAM, of, of memory, and way too much stuff that they want to fit into it, <clears throat> which is a totally analogous to anyone you know who's got a messy desk in their office, for example, and, and is trying to clear it out. Um, and again, this is a case where you know I think we can learn something surprising and interesting from looking at how computers do it. And so one of the one of the great principles of cache management in, in computer science 
uh, is what's called the least recently used principle, which means that if, you're, if your memory is full, if your space is full, and you've got to get rid of something, get rid of the thing that you've used uh, the longest ago. Um, right. So this is a principle that we, you know, we argue is, is a handy way to clean out your closet. Um, it's also a handy way to, to kind of organize your desk. Um, and I think the most surprising thing about the least recently used principle um, is it says the thing that you're most likely to need is going to be the last thing that you just touched. Um, <laughs> and the, the thing that you're second most likely to need is the thing that you touched second to last. Um, and what this ends up meaning is that uh, in the case of documents, for example, in the case of papers, um, literally just stacking a giant pile on your desk um, is the kind of thing we would all feel guilty about, right? We've got this giant pile. Right. Uh, in fact, computer science says this is the optimal way to store that information. This is the best possible way uh, to organize the papers is just to put them in one big pile. And so that's one of those things that people do naturally, but they feel guilty about it. And the message from computer science is, you're actually doing the right thing without realizing. Yeah, I just went through cleaning out a closet and a lot of stuff in there I, I almost forgot I had. At, at one point, it seemed important <laughs> to save, so I guess that's similar, right? <laughs> exactly. That's perfectly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's really interesting. I mean, you go into a lot of different examples, and we've only touched on a couple, but uh, this can uh, help people, I imagine, just kind of organize their life a little bit better, but probably more efficiently, too, take less time to make decisions. I guess that's the, the bottom line, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the, one of the biggest messages in the book is um, we have this idea that you know computers represent this kind of ideal of decision making where they they consider every possible option they think everything all the way through uh, they take whatever time is needed to make a, a perfect decision you know with absolute certainty that's always the right answer um, in fact most of the problems um, that computers face in you know in modern life are simply too hard uh, for computers to have the luxury to, to think that hard about them. Um, and so what computers do when they're up against what's called an intractable problem, uh, one of the hardest classes of problems, uh, what they do looks a lot more like what humans do, which is they try some things at random. Uh, they're <clears throat> willing to make mistakes. They're willing to make an answer that's correct most of the time, but not all of the time. Mm. Uh, they're willing to make an answer that's approximately correct, although not precisely correct. And this is something where there's a real opportunity to learn something from how computers solve this hardest class of problems because it really does resemble what humans do. And so this is another case where we have this ideal in our minds that we really we ought to be able to think everything through all the way to the end like a computer. Um, but in many cases, that's not what computers are doing. Uh, and what they're doing looks a lot more like human decision-making. Algorithms to Live By, The Computer Science of Human Decisions is the name of the book. And uh, we're talking with the co-authors, Brian uh, Christian, today. And uh, Brian, give out a website if we can get more information uh, on the book. Sure, that would be algorithmstolivebycom Well, Brian, pleasure talking to you. Great, uh, again, a great idea for a book. And uh, please keep in touch. Uh, love to have you on down in the future. But thanks for being with us today. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Thank you. I'm Stan Brock. 30 years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids right here at home in the United States of America. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.